Good morning and welcome back to Planet Alt History. Today we are going to discuss what if World War I never happened. World War I is like the ending of the long 19th century, according to some historians. For many historians, the French Revolution until the end of World War I, they were all one part of a whole period. There were a lot of changes and rapid progress, and not to mention the industrialization, which changed societies within some decades, that they became really unrecognizable. This long 19th century was also having the revival of imperialism, mainly in Africa, with the scramble of Africa, and even in Asia with the split of China. The French colonization of Indochina, the British Raj, Dutch Indonesia, and so on and so forth. After World War I, imperialism started to decline gradually, and many ideologies gained the upper hand such as fascism, communism, and also, of course, the political system of democracy became much more prevalent. Now we have to remember that World War I could have also happened much earlier, in, let's say, 1905, for instance. There was a Moroccan crisis, for instance, and Germany wanted to assert dominance over Morocco, and the French as well as the Brits, well, they were, of course, not really happy about it, and the French had interest themselves in there, and the UK never wanted to see a strong Germany. Other events leading to World War I were the Anglo-Russian Entente, the Bosnian Crisis, the Agadir Crisis, the Italo-Turkish War, and finally the assassination of Franz Ferdinand. So, what if World War I never happened? If we want this scenario to play out, we need to take out someone like Wilhelm II. He might have been a competent leader, but he was far too instable, and if the rule would fall to his son and his advisors, it is possible that Germany would be somewhat calmer and not pressing so much for places such as Morocco. Moreover, with the assassination of Franz Ferdinand, let's assume it's not but a flight away, Wilhelm III won't have this personal connection with Franz Ferdinand as his father did in OTL. Sure, while Germany and Austria-Hungary are allies still in that timeline, Germany would make it clear to the Austrians that they would not get support if war broke out. The ultimatum to Serbia would be revised, it would be considerably smaller, and the Austrians would be satisfied as for the moment. Two countries will undergo big changes, and these countries are mainly Russia and the US. Let's talk about the US at first. The US will continue its period of isolationism, but it's their type of American isolationism, because as other YouTubers like What If Altist explained, this was never truly isolationism that the US had, because they continuously somehow expanded, but be it only in the Americas, and even Asia with the Philippines. So the US would continue its isolationism, and it will still have the Monroe Doctrine as main point of their foreign policies. The political landscape of the US will become unrecognizable, and it might even be possible that the US would have very different political parties and as well as during the Mexican Revolution, they would try to have more influence over it, and they might at one point even intervene directly and annex some territories like California Baja and create a satellite state out of Mexico. Many other Latin American countries could follow, and the US would have a strict control over the Americas. It would create a lot of tensions in Latin America, and many groups would call for actions against the US, maybe make even alliances with the Europeans, rebellions, revolts would appear, etc. Latin America would become as explosive as the Middle East 
is today. Russia without the war could, if they had some luck and other competent leaders after the current Tsar, successfully reform into a constitutional monarchy. Russia would have a similar system as Britain because they were trying to use Britain as a basis for it and continue their expansion to the east. Without World War I, Finland and Poland would be still under their strict control. And if I talk about Poland, I mainly mean Congress Poland. Standards of life would eventually somehow improve and industrialization would advance, although differently than in Ochia. It's still a very strange thing to hear that if Russia never became communist, that industrialization would never happen. That's far from the truth. Industrialization already started during the periods of the Tsar. Without World War I, the Russian Revolution, the Holodomor, and independencies of many countries, Russia could use the deportation system to populate Siberia much more and eventually even expand from there again eastwards, but by demographic needs. Italy, after failing to get Ethiopia some decades ago, would at one point or another try to conquer it again, as in OGL. And seeing how the Ottomans would become weaker and weaker, they could try to contact the Russians to make a deal. The Brits, the French could jump in and the Germans as well, since they had some economical interests already in place. The Greeks could expand and there wouldn't be any Armenian genocide. But the Ottomans would basically become like China. At first big, important and influential, but then in that moment in this ATL steamrolled from all the sides. Next up, the Italians would have their eyes on Austria-Hungary and the Balkans clashing there with Russia. Austria-Hungary would be ready to probably give up some territories to Italy in order to appease them somehow and ask for money or port rights in the Italian colonies as well as a non-aggression pact. You have to remember that due to the fact that the Germans showed that they were not interested to follow up with Austria-Hungary in the situation of the assassination of Franz Ferdinand. In there, Austria-Hungary would be in a position against the wall where they would have to basically give up territories to the Italians. Austria-Hungary would still try to reform, but eventually it would all fall apart with Hungary getting independent. And the Slavs in that case, where we still have a map like in before World War I, they would probably unite in one way or another and also would probably go and just be annexed by Germany. The Hungarians would probably ally with the Germans, while the Slavs would be very careful as to not upset the Germans nor the Russians. France at one point would get more radical right-wing politicians. Because without the un Union Sacrée, which prevented leftist strikes and made an alliance between the political left and the right during World War I. And because of the Italian expansion, the French would be worried that the Italians would retake Corsica or Nizza, and the fact that the Germans still had Alsace-Lorraine, it would make the French right go nuts. I mean, Clemenceau, he was already a very right-wing politician, but if the French, they would not be able to get things done, and if Clemenceau would come and do policies in an empty-handed way, this means that with these leftist strikes and this frustration that was building up, especially for the countries around them that are expanding and expanding, there would be a reaction. No, it would not be French fascism or whatever. It would just become some type of a very unique to France right-wing ideology. It is very possible that at one point the French would then provoke a crisis within the German sphere of influence and France could become a provoker for an upcoming war together with Russia, but probably without Great Britain. A war in the Balkans would be unavoidable unless 
unless Yugoslavia or something similar would be established. Yugoslavia could probably become an ally to the Russians and to the French, while Bulgaria and Hungary and Greece would probably be closer to Germany and Italy. Japan would continue its expansion in China and all the other European empires would come and also try to claim a part of it. The age of imperialism would continue and every empire would try to go higher and higher. Africa would also suffer under colonialism. The Europeans would establish themselves strong, stronger in there, gain a much stronger foothold and the population of Europe would still be much higher and they could potentially create more European settlements in Africa. At the end of the, this thing, the end was would still happen. A very alternative World War I could also happen where the French would try to find a way to get Germany. Thing is, when the French they tried to go against Germany and get a way to get Elvis Lothringen, the French could try to get the Russians on their side, as well as Yugoslavia, and they could force the Luxembourgers, the Belgians and the Dutch to somehow take position against the Germans, while the Russians they could do the same with the, the Slavic Confederation, the Czech Slovak Poles and the Romanians. Greece would then target to get Macedonia. Today we know it as Northern Macedonia, or it was known as Firom. Italy would target parts of Nizza and Dalmatia, Albania. Germany would want to create puppet states in Russian territory and to get also French colonies and make France pay for it. And eventually the Japanese could jump in and take Russian territories and also French or Dutch colonies, depending where the Dutch would try to yeah, take sides. If this war happens, it would be probably without the Brits, because the Brits would not really tolerate a France that would be the aggressive one and also be the one that would somehow poke the Belgians. So they would just let it happen and just hope that the French might somehow stop the Germans. And the Americans, well, they will just have their own thing to do. They will probably already be busy in all of Latin America, so they will not care so much. And at the end, the age of imperialism would would uh, continue and France as a nation would see a similar decline as Spain and the Ottoman Empire. The US, the British Empire, Germany and Japan would come out as the strongest empires while China, Turkey and Latin America would suffer from endless turmoils. Russia would be heavily, heavily, very heavily weakened and France would be totally silenced. That's it for today. I hope you enjoyed my video. Be sure to like and subscribe, leave a comment, support me also on Patreon, and join my forum, forum.planetalthistory.ga. Until next time, on Planet Alt History.